Whenever you're doing anything for God, there's gonna always be distractions. Out of all the days, they are plowing the leaves outside and that does usually occur. And then I just felt like I didn't have no words today. I didn't get up at my usual time, I slept in. Yet, you're called to do this and try to be the salt and light of the world. It's too much. And any other day, it'd have been so easy for me to make this video. That's why I know this video is meant to be made because somebody needs it. Hey y'all, welcome or oh, welcome back to my channel. I am Catherine and today we are going to be going over what a typical quiet morning routine looks like. Every day is different. I want you to get out of your mind that you have to be perfect, that it has to be hours at a time. You can see notions, take them out. I'm going to share what I've done and how I work to get to where I am with finding a routine. If you're in your car watching this, you're at home, you walking into the door of your job that you do not like, I'm going to give you a couple of ideas on how you can still incorporate that quiet time with God. So this originated from me starting to work from home. I did not always work from home. I actually had a nine to five job, lost it, and God kept pushing me in the direction to start my own business, which ironically was online, AKA working from home. And I had no structure, none whatsoever. Your discipline is not challenged until you start working from home. Even the most organized person will be challenged. For the first year, I was a hot mess express. I had no structure. Realized that working from home came with its own challenges. Also being newlywed, trying to figure out what I wanna do in my life feeling alone, not having any family or friends from here. I was just going through a transition. I did not know how to deal with any of it. It was in 2020, everything hit the fan. I realized that I could not just hop on social media without approaching it with the armor of a God. People glamorize entrepreneurship so much. Only 4.31 in the morning, a couple of months now. I've just been feeling like my workload is so heavy. I haven't been able to do other things around our home. But my prayer, God, show me how to do it your way. Obviously, I'm feeling at it doing my way. It's all so new to me, and it's definitely a challenging field to be in. And you're in this world that is so consuming. But yet, you're called to do this and try to be the salt and light of the world, and you're like, it's too much. My therapist would say, anybody that goes into battle will always be prepared. How do you go into battle when you get on social media? I never thought about it that way. You really process it you are going to be thrown so much. Where you know your day is gonna feel off and you're not going to know exactly why you feel that way or how you even get there. I started doing these quiet times in the morning to prepare myself for the day ahead. Every single time that I do it, y'all, always feel so refreshed, prepared for the day, no matter what comes my way. And it doesn't necessarily mean that my situation has changed. I feel like I can conquer the day. There's peace in that time with God before you head into your work day versus just diving in the second you wake up. I did not grow up knowing how to express what I was feeling. The only two emotions I've ever known was happy and angry, nothing in between. I began to feel things that were neither one. I felt like I had no control over my life, what I was feeling, what I was thinking, what even was in my heart or what I was saying out loud. I started taking therapy. Tell me just to jot things down in the notebook 
Don't overthink it. Just whatever comes to mind, write it. And that has been very therapeutic. And I knew that I had so much to write down, so much emotion that I was feeling. I need to put all those words down on paper. I needed to find a notebook that can hold more of my words. So I actually found this one on Amazon. This one has 256 pages. Most journals are less than half of that. In my notebook, I actually have a filling list. This filling list has a positive side and a negative side. Usually when you wake up in the morning, you know how you feel. You may not have the words, but you know. I'm feeling off, I immediately go to the negative feeling side. I skim through this list, begin to find words that could possibly describe what I'm feeling and I write them down in my notebook. So go to the positive side. At times, if I'm being honest, I don't feel anything positive. In other days, it's complete opposite. I have multiple positive feelings and no negative words. And then there's other days where you're gonna have a mix of both. You can feel two different things at the same time. So when I started to write in my journal, I would actually write down the time that I was waking up and then how I'm feeling. My sleep is usually the first thing affected when something is on my mind. And that's why I set this atmosphere up because you're in a quiet atmosphere. You allow yourself to reflect. There's no distractions in that God begins to reveal things to you. I'm honest with myself. I don't hold nothing back. And that's what this journal is for. I begin to feel this relief. I feel peace. Mindset, my perspective has changed with everything that I've been through in my life, especially at such a young age, and I'm still healing from today at the age of 30. I need this quiet time. I'm learning to unlearn so much, and in the process, God is just constantly doing a new thing. And someone recommended a little devotional books for me. It's not supposed to be that way. Forgiving what you can't forget. And after reading both of these books, which completely changed my life and gave me new perspective. I loved her book so much, I ended up getting the devotion, um, Seeing Beautiful Again. The best way that I am saturated with what I just read is by writing it down. Writing what I get from it, what stood out to me. Even if there's a Bible verse, I go into my Bible app on my phone and I like to look at different versions of it. I grew up on King James Version and y'all, I have a hard time understanding it. So I'll go to the NLT or NIV version. I also put the message version on there just to see what this verse is saying. That's how I better understand a verse. God isn't looking for perfection. He isn't looking for you to know the Bible at the back of your hand. It is understanding scripture and how you can apply it either to yourself or to someone or to your situation. It's important to mention that your quiet time every day will look different. You may not start off journaling, you might just start off reading the book. Other days you just might start off just sitting here saying thank you Jesus, reflecting, thank you God for what you've done. There are gonna be other days where you're just gonna sit here and cry and listen to worship music. There's just gonna be other days you just sit in silence. But it's based off what you need. If you will make the space for him, where there's no distraction and you give him that time, you will always hear him, you will always sense him. Anytime you do anything for God, there's gonna always be distractions. About 4.30 right now, I've been up since, I actually wrote it down. I've been up since 3.50. That's because I have a lot on my mind. I decided to write it down inside my phone to put those thoughts somewhere. I gotta go back to sleep. There's just too much going on in here. Just put my thoughts down on paper. Not holding anything back. A lot of clarity about what I need to do. Some of it I know I can't change. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> But I'm going to just pray, see how I feel. I might go back to sleep. At 5.30, I'm usually up, so quite a bit to do today. You are not exempt from the way of this world, and, and that's why the Bible says every day you need to renew your mind. Realizing that there will be distractions and being aware of it will set you up for your quiet time. So what I've done, because what my mind tends to do, my mind tends to rush in so many thoughts on top of the feelings that I'm trying to understand. Or God will reveal to you new ideas. How I prepare myself is I bring with me a to-do list. I have a notebook that I write my video ideas in. Instead of it dwelling on my mind, I write those things down as they come to mind. What I like to do next is I like to close it out in prayer. One thing you don't want to do is just like get up and move on. You wanna still dwell in that atmosphere. And to dwell in that atmosphere, I pray. There is no right or wrong way to pray. It's just talking to God. 
truly. He hears you and he listens and he wants to hear from you. So all you gotta do is just talk to God. It can be something as simple as I may not know what I'm feeling. I'm new to this and I'm trying and I want to get better at this. Show me how and help me, amen. It can be even simpler. God, thank you for waking me up today, amen. I've gotten into yoga back in January as well, y'all. One thing that I realized that I need is to stay active. I love dancing, I love running, I love moving my body. I love how it made me feel. Structure, she would say, I'm so proud of you showing up to the mat today. I never understood that until you have a morning where you're struggling and you don't feel like doing it and you do it anyway. It's those days that she's referring to. I mentioned to y'all earlier, the first sign that something is wrong is how early I get up. So of course I ain't gonna be trying to come to the mat that day. Sometimes I deal with anxiety, high level anxiety. And with yoga, it has helped me get my breathing under control. I've noticed a major difference. Yoga felt so good this morning. Those stretches, oh my gosh, they felt so good. The thing about yoga is that it's all about mindfulness. So you can't help but to focus on your breathing and your body. And that's one thing I love about it, it's challenging you to really listen to your body. What is it telling you? How is it feeling? It makes sense why so many years I had anxiety. I didn't realize I had no control over my breathing. I've seen a significant difference dealing with anxiety. I have it a lot lot less than I have had in the last 10, 15 years. And I work out in my sleepwear because it's early, y'all. It's really early. We live in the apartment. My husband is literally still sleeping. And I just want to be respectful to our neighbors and my husband. And this has just been convenient for me and it works. 5.30 right now. I'm about to go walk my dog. I come back from walking in. I'm going to clean up the living room a bit. And then wash up and get ready for the work day. Fashionable. I just had my pajamas on, a jacket on, and I'm about to go walk my dog. Day three. Today was a prime example of how my quiet time is not the same. It was a little tough today. I can usually tell on my breathing when I'm stressed or when I have a lot on my plate and I felt like my breathing was shaky. Realize how tense you are until you have to really slow down and listen to your body. I woke up today at 4.45, but I went to bed at seven. Today was not a take out a devotional, a Bible. I literally took out my notebook and just wrote every single thing that was on my mind work-wise, but also jotted down everything I needed to do. Just prayed to God like, God, I need help. I need to unwind. I'm just really stressed. Never know which direction God is going to send you in. And that can last anywhere from five minutes to two and a half hours, maybe three. It just really depends that day. Every day is different. I don't do yoga all the time, nor do I journal every day. You will usually know once you consistently do this the direction that God will have you to go in and there will always be peace with it. The great thing about it, you can always come back to it the next day. There's no perfection in this. And if you just do not have the time or you just have a busy schedule in the morning, which I will also pray about. I've learned in church to give God your first 15. And in no particular order, but it's prayer, worship, and a devotion, reading the Bible, whatever that looks like for you. 
five minutes per each. That's your first 15, the first thing that you do when you get up in the morning. When I worked the nine to five, my devotion, my time with God was in the car on my way to work or on the bus on my way to work. And I would use that time to just literally listen to worship music, talk to God, or listen to a podcast, listen to a sermon, and fill myself up. I would screenshot a Bible verse and repeat it to myself. God is not oblivious to your situation, but the fact that you decided to get up that day and give him five minutes of your day means more than you not giving him any time of your day. All this quote on Instagram, it basically sums up that it's amazing with just spending a little bit of time with God, listen to a worship song, whispering a prayer, how it can radically change your day. It's 1.49 in the morning. All the days of me trying to wake up at appropriate time for this video, this is the week that I've been waking up way earlier than I'm used to. So much on my mind. And my husband said, he's like, I feel like we're under attack because everything is just coming from all different ways. It's evident that this video must be published. didn't realize how much I needed that. Didn't realize how much I needed to be up at this time. I just got done watching a sermon and something that dawned on me. I wake up at this time. I does his best work at me. He knew that I've been too busy. It's his way of getting my attention. And the sermon was a huge reminder that I needed to continue to move forward, to continue to do this video. And they talked all about obedience remembering God's purpose for you. I feel so good versus when I first woke up. God is so good, I needed this morning. So much more hopeful than I did all week. I needed this. I needed this so much. God never wastes anything. y'all have any questions leave them in the comments if you don't feel comfortable direct message me if you need prayer message me i never put your business out there i never share with anybody else if you're going to delete it afterward i can really want this to be a safe space I'm here for you okay i am here for you so you let me know what you need i will link all the books down below i will also share this filling list i will even share a worship playlist i will share the yoga video that I do on YouTube, share my notebook, I will share everything down below in the description box. If I forget something, let me know. We made it to the end. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And as always, y'all, 